have to start off today's video by apologizing. You see, a couple of weeks ago, I put out my video about ghost inventory and how to avoid it. And uh, I got quite a good amount of views on that video. A lot of people watched it, a lot of people liked it. The video was basically about not blaming the system for your inventory issues because 99 plus percent of the time, the issue is a human error that has caused the ghost inventory issue. But several of you made me aware that there is a systemic issue with the way I've been recommending people add inventory to TCG Player. Um, and I've got to correct that. My name's Chase, this is TCG Bulk Kings, where every card has value, and we're gonna get right into figuring out how not to cause this inventory issue. So what I've been advocating has been to use either quick list if you can, but most people aren't using quick list because they don't like the software or they don't have access to a scanner or a webcam. In my opinion, it's not a super big amount more helpful than just using the pricing tab, which is what I had been doing. So I've been recommending you use the pricing tab, you pull up the set, and then you work down the list on the pricing tab and add cards to your TCG player inventory that way. But like I said, several of you made me aware that there's an issue with this and I'll go into that and then what you what you should do instead to avoid hitting that issue. Okay, so here I've got the TCG player homepage open the back end for sellers and what I've been recommending you do is you go to the pricing tab, you get access to this once you reach level 4 as a seller on TCG player. Uh, before that, you have to either use a scanning app on your phone or use the inventory tab to type in things manually. So getting access to this pricing tab is a big reason to get to level four as quickly as you can. However, what I've been recommending people do is to pull up each set that you're trying to list and on, on this page and list it from here. So I've got a bunch of uh, Lord of the Rings, um, magic cards, foils uh, here I'm ready to list. And so what I would recommend people do is, you know, pull up the list here. We'll go to Universes Beyond, Lord of the Rings, not Transformers, Lord of the Rings. There we go. Advanced Filters. We know we want Foil and we want Near Mint. And then pull up the list this way. Here's the list of cards. You know, we switch it to as many as it'll show us. For some reason, it'll only show us 500 at a time. But that's actually not going to be a problem anymore. But anyway, we've got, so we pull up this list, right? And we've got this list and I've got a stack of, let's see, eight foil Arwen's gift regular frame here. So we would go over here to Arwen's gift right here, come over here, put in our price and our quantity, right? And then, you know, we'd work down the list. I've got several hundred cards here I need to list we keep working down the list. Now, I don't have any of these foils in stock, it looks like, uh, the few I've had I've sold out of, but say I had already 10 copies of this Arwen's Gift in stock. Go back here, Arwen's Gift. Say I had 10 copies of this in stock already, and then I add eight more. But while I'm working down the list, working through all of these cards that start with B and all these cards that start with C, I sell four of those copies while I have this list open. And then when I get to the bottom down here, I go and click save, but I've got 18 typed into the box here instead of 14, because now I only have 14, the eight I'm adding and the six that I have left after I've sold those four copies. Well, the computer doesn't know that I'm not adding 12 instead of eight, so it updates my inventory to 18, but I only have 14. Now I've got four ghost inventory. And this is a systemic issue that comes from using the pricing tab to add inventory. This is a problem. I didn't, I'd never seen this problem before. I'm sure it has affected my inventory. I may even have to go through and do a cycle count through my inventory because of this. It's a problem, right? You can't do that. You can't, you cannot use this tool that exists because it's inherently flawed and it will cause your inventory to not be correct. Especially if you're a bigger seller with a broader inventory that you're gonna sell more copies of things more often. Um, you're gonna be listing cards from sets that you already have cards in more often. This is going to be an issue. So what are we supposed to do about it, right? Um, other than double check everything or th th some suggestions I'd seen before I got the real answer was, you know, hide your inventory, 
before you add any inventory so that nothing can sell while you're, you're while you're changing quantities but that just blocks people from buying your stuff right and it doesn't change you know if people are trying to buy stuff that's there if, they, if they've already got stuff in their cart I don't know how that affects that if that you know that could sour them on your store you're, you're gonna lose sales that way another suggestion I'd seen is to save every time you change any of the quantities on this on this page but that's ridiculous uh especially if you're adding cards to like lord of the rings there's almost 900 unique foil cards in this set um that would be really really time consuming i'm in tcg players growth acceleration program and this is the advice that they gave me and that is to use filtered csvs which is a different feature of the pricing tab page that you can use and there's absolutely no reason to use the regular tool unless you just have like one card you're adding really quickly when you have filtered CSVs open to you, which every level four seller will does have open to them. And I'm going to show you how to use it right now. So instead of using the, the page here on the pricing tab, okay, so what we're going to do instead is we're going to do CSV importing and exporting. And this is a tool that we have that every level four seller should have. So if you see above my list here, and you know, if we just refresh this page without the this pulled up, I've got this series of buttons right here. One of these is export filtered CSV. And if you mouse over it, it says select multiple filters and download a CSV continuous products from the TCG player catalog. That doesn't sound like the kind of thing that would necessarily be helpful, um, but this is what we're going to do. We're going to pull up this. Instead of searching up here at the top, we're going to pull up the export filtered CSV and we're going to search it this way. So we're going to stay in Magic, but it works for any game that's any, any product line in the TCG player universe. Stick with Magic. Uh, it's got all the sets in there just like at the top. We're going to go to Universes Beyond, Lord of the Rings. Just the same kind of thing. So near mint, all rarities, English. We're gonna do foil printings because that's what I've got here is foil cards. You don't have to worry about this. You don't have to worry about that. Export filtered CSV. And it'll pop up here at the top and show me, hey, I've downloaded a thing. And then I can open it and there it is. Now what's important, we don't wanna delete any of these uh, columns just to make it simple to add back in. The spreadsheet is saved on my computer. It's in my downloads folder. Um, and it's now a list of every foil card in the universes beyond Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle Earth set. See the condition here is near mint foil. It's not any non foils. It's just all the foils. So what we're really interested in is we're going to scroll over here to the right just a bit and we see it's got a total quantity and then an add to quantity and the TCG marketplace price. So that's what we're, we're looking at for the marketplace price. Now, when I typically, when I'm adding, I typically just set it to market price, but you know, a lot of these direct low price, cause it gives you all this information, the direct low price of this Aragorn the Uniter, for instance, I don't have an Aragorn the Uniter, but if I did, the direct low price is nine bucks and the market price is four. You know, this one here, this Anduriel, uh, 1095 versus 454. We're going to go based off of the direct low price and then let my mass price tool reprice it for me. But that's where we're going to be if, to start with. Just to set prices is we're going to, we can match it to the market price and then program in our floor. So we're going to do equals if, uh, but you got, you put in three values and they're separated by semicolons. So if, and then you put in the formula for what you want to do or what you're wanting to check. So, so it's if J2 here is less than whatever your price floor is, mine is 10 cents, semicolon. And then we decide what it's gonna be, if that's true. So set it to 10 cents. And then if not, we, we decide what it's gonna be if it's not true. So if it if the direct low column is less than 10 cents, we will set this to 10 cents. Otherwise, set it to the direct low column. Enter. And we can see that it's matched that to 334. And then we can just double click on the little square in the corner and that will do it for the entire column. So the total quantity is what you have if you have any in stock currently. I wonder if that's even legible for you guys on screen, but you can see I've got my title, my card name and my quantity column on here now. Uh, so I've got these Arwen's Gift that I was telling you about at the beginning. I've got eight of them. Arwen's Gift, regular, 
add to quantity is this one, so we're adding eight. And move on, right? So in this step, it is just like working down the list on the pricing tab. I've got six battle scarred goblins right here. So we would just go down here to battle scarred goblin and put in six. And we just work down the whole list. Now the way this works, talk about it a little bit while I'm organizing these cards. The way this works, since we're adding it to an add to column, it's not treating it as this is the amount that you have in stock. It's treating it as this is how much we need to change the amount you have in stock. And because of that, it doesn't get affected by the same systemic issue where you could sell it while you're trying to update your stock. So it solves that issue. This, as far as I know, other than weird, crazy things that could happen, I guess, that's the only main systemic issue. And it's entirely a preventable thing. I just didn't know it was an issue or I would have been preventabling it already. I've got this stack about, I don't know, about 400 cards I've just added. It's taken me 30 minutes, including all the talking I did at the beginning. I'm at 32 minutes of recording at the moment. <clears throat> and that'll be cut down, obviously. You don't need to hear me muttering to myself while I'm adding stuff to the spreadsheet. But you get to this point, it hasn't taken very long. You click save, and now it's saved. And you go back over to here, back to your pricing tab. You still don't pull anything up up here. You go to import to staged. You choose a file. You pick the file you just downloaded and then saved your modifications to. You open it, click continue. It's going to come with these with validation errors. What you can do is ignore the errors. All this is saying is I didn't set prices for my pro seller website store. Uh, my mass price should take care of that. I'm going to ignore the errors and submit valid changes. And then it does so. 12 products were successfully imported. We're going to go to move to live. There, it's updated. Close. Now we can update this. And there we are. PCG Vault Kings, 10 cents. Right? That was relatively painless. And it doesn't give us the issue where we are updating the quantity, even if we've sold some while we were updating the entire page. Like I said, as far as I know, that is the only known systemic issue that creates ghost inventory. If you know of any others, let me know. I'll figure out a workaround to keep it from happening and I'll share it out with everybody. Uh, but yeah, now do not use the pricing tab to add inventory for a set. If you're going to be adding lots of cards from a set, you need to work through the filtered CSV function, download a spreadsheet, edit it, re-upload it back. That will keep your inventory more true to what it actually is um, so that the inventory on TCG Player reflects the inventory that you have on your shelf. If this has been useful for you, share it with somebody, give it a like, leave a comment if you have any any comments or any questions or know of any, like I said, any other issues that might cause ghost inventory. If you want to watch my earlier video, if you missed it somehow and you want to see what I'm talking about as far as ghost inventory and how else to prevent it, then check out this video right up here. Otherwise, click on this one over here and you'll find something else that's interesting for you. Why is this so crazy? make it rectangular it doesn't fit that's why